Hi everybody, hope you're all having a gorgeous day so far. I know it is looking absolutely gorgeous in Cape Town, it is such a beautiful day. And today we're going to have a nice fun conversation. I'm looking forward to hanging with all of you this afternoon. I'm just waiting for our fabulous doctor to join. Let me see if I can add him. There you go. I'm getting better at this actually. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Hello. Look how good you are at technology. <laughs> so thank you so much for everybody for joining us. So if you've spent hours in the gym hoping to squat your way into a Kardashian-esque kind of butt, then you've probably wondered if there isn't a quicker or an easier way <laughs> to get a good ass. And of course, it turns out butt augmentation is one of the fastest uh, growing cosmetical surgery procedures in the country and in the world at the moment, believe it or not. And to tell us a little bit more about it is one of my favorite people in the world and one of my oldest friends. He's such a good plastic surgeon, you can't tell how old he is. <laughs> hello, Willem. Hello, doctor. How are you? Hello, Jeannie. Hello, Jeannie. Hello, all. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Um, Jeannie, you're going to have to leave this conversation because obviously I'm not going to use this as a consultation. So you need to ask me some questions. I'm very happy to, to help you through it. And I'm sure you've got a list, so fire away. Willem, this definitely isn't a consultation. Don't tell anybody what I'm gonna be doing with my bum. <laughs> so I guess thanks to the Kardashians, a perfectly put big bum is now what is in fashion apparently. Um, why would somebody want a bigger bum? It's not about a bigger bum, Jenny. It's about a more shapely bum. And you use the Kardashians, it's, it's, it's in uh, poor taste to speak to the Brazilians. So unfortunately, we've all got this Brazilians, have got this, this uh, it just sounds better when you say Brazilian, whether it be a Brazilian lift or a Brazilian low wave, but always just somehow, if someone comes out of Brazilian, it's gotta be better. I've so, got a lot of Brazilian girlfriends and they really do have the best buns. They do have the best <laughs> buns, but they don't have the biggest buns. They've got the shapiest buns. And now that, that's yeah. really what we're after. We're not after the biggest bun. And the Kardashians, you know, unfortunately, some American surgeons have given it a bit of a bad, a bad rep. But yeah. even if you speak to the Brazilian surgeons, they are adamant that it's not what they're after. They're actually after a better shape rather than a big bun. Yeah. So what exactly is a bum augmentation? Is it lifting the bum? Is it adding in implants? Is it adding in fat? What is it? It's all of that, all right. So the traditional Brazilian butt lift, as described by the Brazilians, required surgery. But you know, we're not here to reinvent the wheel. And, and as you know, social media, people tend to put their own name on things. And the Brazilian butt lift, the way we know it today, is actually fat augmentation. So it's not an implant per se, it's actually using your own fat, so sucking it out of where you don't want to, particularly people's love handles, their tummies, their arms, and then spinning it off, preparing it, and then putting in that bun in a much shakier fashion. So the idea is, is that a lot, of, a lot of people get a violent shape to their figure. We yeah. sort of have a love handle that's a little bit bulky and your, your bun tends to get that little yeah. indentation. So what we do is we remove that curve or the top with the violin, the top of the violin is, and we put it with a bummer. So you get a much bigger S curve. Yeah. Are there and different types essence, of bums that you can have? Like what happens if, like, do you sit with the client beforehand and then design the shape? No. No, so you, obviously there are slight modifications, but the general idea is that you get a thinner waistline and a nicer curvier bum without that masculine dent in the side. Now, obviously, when you're dealing with men, some of them prefer the muscular dent, so then you don't fill that up as you would with a, with a, a female bottom, and then you just fill the top. What happens if somebody, yeah, somebody just commented now, uh, Rickaline Cherie said, we re, you're recycling fat, which is, it's a very it's exactly sustainable business you're it's in. very <laughs> sustainable. Well, you know, you don't want to get fat afterwards, you don't want to get too big, really, but you literally are taking fat out of somewhere, and you're sticking it where Maybe you'd like it a bit more. Exactly. What happens if somebody doesn't have enough weight in other places in their body in order to put on the bone? You can put in an implant. Um, the thing I like most about the fat is that it is your own tissue. Obviously, the drawbacks to all these things. So you need a donor site, so you need to suck it out of somewhere. And I don't know too many people who say, oh, I've got 
too little fat. But there are those people that are super fit and super well dieted. And obviously, they need to put in a, a, an implant. And for that, you need a similar to a breast implant. So it kind of looks like this, except it's designed for your bum. It's not for your boot. And they're very specific implants to be used for, for bottoms. But yeah. my personal feeling is that it doesn't give you the same aesthetic results as your own fat does. So I'm, I'm very pro-fat. And although I'm okay to do an implant, if you don't have enough, I much prefer to use your own autologous tissue to put it into the bottom. Yeah. What I love about you is, obviously, I've known you for so long, but I know that you are very conservative and you do have, like, incredible ethics. So what happens if somebody comes to you and they want something a little bit, like, vulgar and a little bit crazy? You do get those people, like, I mean, you what do, do you say you know, in those situations? It takes, uh, it takes all kinds yeah, to make the world go round as well. So, yes, of course, there's, there's not always what I like. And within cultures, people have different aesthetic needs, aesthetic wants. And if it doesn't suit mine, it's not necessarily right for yours. So I am pliable to a certain degree. But if you're going to give me something that's completely unreasonable, I'm going to say no. But if, as long as you're within reason and it's yeah. not totally, totally ridiculous, okay. I'm happy to do it. It just mustn't be... Weird. Okay. Yeah, crazy. Uh, yeah, what are the risks involved? The risk involved. So, I mean, it is still an operation. So, it's still a general anesthetic. It still requires three or three and a half hours of general anesthetic, which is a long time to be general anesthetic. So, it's a cosmetic procedure. So, you're putting yourself under anesthesia for a cosmetic procedure. Okay. So, there's that. Then, of course, the infection risks, there are fat risks, and obviously the main one that people are mostly worried about right now is the fat envelope. So if that fat accidentally ends up in one of your deep veins, which yeah. is a very large vein that sits underneath your muscle, but it is very deep. So you'd have to really try to get it in there as far as I'm concerned. There have been reported deaths from this, but uh, it's like anything, you know, everything carries a risk. Whether you drive to the supermarket every day, or whether you walk to the supermarket, or whether you drive your kid to school, there is a risk involved. So there are risks involved. So once you have the operation, is it a tiny incision just like between your two buttocks? So I generally put one right in the little V, one yeah. a little higher up where those dents usually are on either side, and then one yeah. at the bottom of your crease. So as your little crease at the bottom becomes a little line where it stops, I yeah. put another one there. So I have and then does the bump points. stay on the top? Like, does it stay on the top? It won't, like, your fat won't all of a sudden drop to the bottom and then have an extra saggy bump. No. Let, me, let me actually show you this implant. I don't know if you can see it so well. But you've got an implant that's hanging down like that. Yeah. And then as soon as you fill it up, it's like a little balloon. So it hangs down when it's not full, and then it fills up. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? It does. Can you sit and on you your bum immediately afterwards? Time. Pardon? Like, what is the recovery time or the downtime? How, like, how soon can you sit after the operation? So you can sit pretty soon afterwards, but I, I, I prefer you to lie and sleep on your sides or on your tummy. And then for the next couple of weeks, it's usually eight weeks afterwards, I'll give you a little pillow where you've got to go and buy one of those little airplane pillows you put on your neck, and you put it underneath your thighs so you don't actually sit on your bottom. So okay. you do have to keep your weight off the bottom, and it's a bit of a pain in the ass to be, excuse the French. But... <laughs> It's necessary. And if you're going to go through these lengths and you're going to go through the surgery and the risk, then look after it. And if it looks after exactly. it, then you have a much higher chance of getting a better result. Now, because it's actual, it's your fat, it's your tissue going back yeah. into your body, um, if you lose weight again after the operation, can you then lose your bum again? Yes, you can. Okay. So generally speaking, I like patients to be at their ideal weight, so their weight is not going to fluctuate. So it is quite nice to get patients who say, look, I've been the same way for the last couple of years. I'm not changing, yeah. but I've got this love handle that I can't get rid of. Or my arms are a bit chubby. Or I'd like a bit more of a six pack or some yeah. definition. Then you use that. And then you, you guarantee that that patient's probably not going to lose that weight or gain weight or do something. Yeah. That's gonna... Will there be scars? Charlene wants to know, will there be scarring? Well, every little access incision, I'll make a small stab incision. Okay. Okay. And unfortunately, I don't have photos I can show you on my phone. It's difficult to do this without uh, yeah. help. But you do have very small incisions, but I hide them in places where you can't see them. So unless you look for them, it's like a breast augmentation. I put the, yeah. the implant, the little cut right at the bottom of the crease, 
So I can pop in the implant underneath there. And generally speaking, unless you're looking for it, you won't, you won't see it. I have to tell you, Willem did an operation on my boobies and I don't have a single scar, nothing, absolutely nothing. And I wasn't actually quite good with the after operation. I mean, I flew two days after the operation. I wasn't allowed to. Oh, you did, did you? Now she I tells did. me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've got no scarring. So you obviously did an amazing job. Willem, what does a bum lift cost? What are the, what are the costs involved with this? So the cost involved, obviously, it's, it's a full the full um, disclosure is that you've got to pay it for the anesthetist, the theatre. We generally like you to spend the night here because there are going to be some issues that you don't want to have at home that you'd rather have our nurses dealing with it. And it's anywhere between 80 and 100,000 rand. Okay. So what that converts to in euros and whatever have you, I don't know, but it works through approximately. There. So obviously we need to consultate, have a look, see how much fat you are, see how long it's going to take me, because a lot of that depends on how long you're going to be in theatre because that'll yeah. determine the final cost. Okay. And I assume when you walk out of the operating room, you would see a beautiful perch bum in the yeah. But I mean, yeah. is, that the, is that the desired effect? Is that done? I mean, that's No, it's not. That's or does very it good settle question. into the look? So I've already said that it takes about eight weeks before you can really start sitting on your bum. And, and what I'm trying to get the most out of there is that the fact that I put it, I want it to survive. Now I've taken a little free fat cell and I've stuck it into a place where it doesn't have a blood supply. So those eight weeks, you're growing a new blood supply for those fat cells. Okay. But you're going to have a period of swelling. The maximum uh, period is going to be the first six weeks. And then the final result, you probably only see after about six months. And that's when we know exactly how much of that fat is taken. And we generally aim for about 30 to 70% of the fat that I've injected. Now, it's pretty low 30, but 70 is also pretty high. Thank to survive you. and if we can get anywhere in that range i'm generally quite happy so if you can get a 30 percent survival you might not have the initial result but you'll still have very nice results yeah and not to mention and don't forget of course is that we've sucked out the fat from the areas you don't want it and even that can improve your shape so even if we didn't put the fat in you'll still get an improvement yeah. in your shape Okay. I so want to know, I've heard this rumor about liposuction that apparently once you do liposuction and you take rumors. that away from one level, I'm asking yes. you so that you can dispel all yes. these kind of yes. horrible myths. Let's hear it. So apparently yeah. they say once you take fat out of one place that you'll get it somewhere else. Does that happen? Do you know why liposuction is so expensive to me? Because yeah. we expect people to look after it. And if you made it cheap, they would just willy-nilly throw it in the bin and it would be done and over. So it is expensive because you expect you to look after it. So we don't expect you to go and gain a lot of weight somewhere else. So that answers my first question. But to answer your question, um, your fat cell can grow. So a single fat cell can grow to whatever size it is. Okay, it can literally get much, much bigger. And yes, of course, if you suck all the fat cells out of one area, it's going to grow back somewhere else. So there's truth in that, but there's also there's, there's margin for, for error in that uh, statement. Does it make sense to you? It makes total sense to me. You explain things so nicely. I feel like I could have gone to medical school with you. And like, you've just, <laughs> you've got this look about you. Like you're almost like Clark came from. from oh, wait, I'll do this. This is my professor. <laughs> you're so bookish. You make me just want to learn. I have lots of books here, Jimmy. I could show you my books, but they really are not that exciting. <laughs> I'm sure. So you mentioned earlier that liposuction is expensive. How much is it? Um, and again, we go by hours. So if you're going for a small area, it's probably going to be between 20 and 30,000 rand. And that's just the liposuction. And that should include your overnight, say, and the anesthetist and everything that goes with it. Okay. And then it's per hour that goes up on that. But, you know, to give you an estimate of how long it would be in theatre, you're probably looking at about three to three and a half hours of theatre for a, for a, um, a buttock augmentation because it requires the liposuction of the areas requires the processing of the fat, the preparing of the, of the donor and the recipient site, and then the actual injection. And the injection itself takes a bit of time. Yeah. I do have machines that help me harvest and to deliver the fat, but even that is done quite slowly and, and methodically. You know, it's a bit of a, an art to it. So who would you recommend a butt augmentation to? Who needs, who needs a good ass? You know what, Jimmy? You're in trouble with these kind of questions. So, I mean, I said this to you yesterday. I see a lot of girls walking around in baggy tops and these yeah. tight, tight pants. Okay? I see a lot of guys walking around in loose shirts and those athletic pants of yeah. So, 
Everyone is a candidate. It is more popular, just like cosmetic surgery. It is a lot more popular amongst uh, women than it is amongst men. It's about an 80-20 split. But we do get questions from guys and from girls. Predominantly from girls, but it's predominantly from, from the girls, not so much the men. But anyone Thank you for coming to us, Willem. We've learned a lot today. We I actually are going to do a few conversations like these. The next chat that yeah. I want to have for you is about breast reductions. I've okay. had so many people message me. Yeah. Um, my happiest that. patients, Julie, are breast reduction patients. They yeah. are by far the easiest patients to deal with. You know, a lot of breast augment patients are much younger. They've got, you know, a lot of time to spend in front of the mirror. So they are quite particular. But my breast reduction patients are always the happiest patients. For them, it's more of a lifestyle change. So they really are wonderful patients to deal with. Yeah. A lot you less, must have uh, to doctor. I think all of your patients are really, really happy. <laughs> You're outstanding. Thank you so much for educating us and helping us learn a little bit more. Pleasure. Thanks I'm for having me to show you. Thank you. Keep you safe. Too. How are you handling your COVID? You've been very... I'm handling my COVID. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even start in on that conspiracy. I see you've got a couple of conspiracy <laughs> theories running on your uh, feed there. So we'll leave it at that. So. All right. Love you lots. I'm in the same camp. Thank Bye. you very, very much, much for chatting to us. It's been a great chat. We'll chat soon. Okay. Bye, Jim. Okay. Bye. And thank you so much for everybody else for joining. Please do let me know what kind of conversations and chats you want to do. And if you've got any extra questions for Dr. Willem, let us know. So this is going to be posted on my live, on my, on my actual feed. And so, yeah, we're here for you. I love having these conversations. And I definitely love sharing some of the information that I want to learn. And, yeah, I'm assuming you want to learn it too. So thank you so much for being with me. And I'll see you next week Friday. Bye. Now, how do I end this thing? <laughs> Ciao.